My name is Brad Bullion. I am Director of Operations with Harden Jefferson ISD, and today I would like to talk to you about the Harvey recovery process. One thing we want to let everyone know is that Harden Jefferson has the opportunity to build $69 million of buildings for a community cost of $25 million. Eleven buildings were flooded and deemed substantially damaged after Hurricane Harvey. Now we'll get to what substantially damaged means in a minute, but first I want to identify the buildings that were substantially damaged during the storm. They were the Henderson Middle School, the Practice Gym, Commodity Storage, the Auto Mechanics Shop, DAP, the Technology Building, which also housed an indoor practice facility, both the stadium restrooms and concession stands, and the field house. Substantial damage is building damage over 50% of the fair market value. Now this only applies to buildings that are in the floodplain. And if a building is in the floodplain and it is deemed substantially damaged, then by law, the building must be brought up to code. And the code states that the building must be brought up to an elevation of at least one foot above base flood elevation, or BFE. So all of the buildings that were deemed substantially damaged are now required to be elevated to one foot above base flood elevation. Now I would like to note that the current high school is one foot above BFE and that all of the buildings that we're proposing to rebuild will actually be rebuilt at two foot above BFE. The FEMA recovery process was a fairly long process. It took us about three years to secure $43 million of obligated money. Now I want to talk a little bit about the FEMA money and what that means. We do not have $43 million or even the $37 million that we'll get to in a minute in the bank. We have been obligated this money by FEMA, which means once we rebuild the buildings, they will reimburse us for invoices paid. So this isn't money that we have now, but it is money that the federal government has guaranteed uh, to allow us to have once we build the buildings as long as we procure them the way that they require. We were also able to secure, secure $600,000 of mitigation funds, which was going to allow us to build the buildings a foot above, the additional foot above base flood elevation. That's what's going to get us to two foot above BFE. They then reduced the insurance funds, which was around $2 million in total, uh, for a total FEMA project of $41.9 million. Now this comes at a 90-10 cost share. And so FEMA provides 90%, we're required to provide 10%. And so the money that we'll be able to get from FEMA totals $37.7 million. I do want to note that this money is to replace the buildings that we had. And it doesn't pay for buildings as they would be designed in 2020. Uh, so this would replace our 1960s buildings and the other buildings that we've built along the way, uh, but isn't enough to cover the entire cost of the recovery plan as designed by the Harvey Recovery Community Advisory Group, which we're going to get to in a minute. The next thing I'd like to talk to you about is location. Now we searched uh, through a vast number of properties. Uh, the board came to me and said, you know, before we decide to just assume that we're going to rebuild on the old location, let's look and see what else is out there. So I did a fairly exhaustive search of uh, properties in China, in Nome, in Sour Lake, um, and, and combined a list of around 12 properties that would uh, be able to accommodate the size that we needed. Uh, the road access that we were going to need, and utilities. Uh, after looking at that search, we then used applied uh, some criteria to them. We wanted something that was centrally located, so it was convenient for all of our residents to get to. Uh, we had to worry about staff sharing, so we sh share a lot of staff between the high school and middle school. Uh, we wanted to ensure that we were still able to do that. Uh, we also share facilities, so uh, all of our athletics facilities, Football fields and uh, other practice fields uh, are shared by both the middle school athletics and band and the high school athletics and band. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we were able to accommodate growth. Um, we have we realize that there is potential for growth in Harden Jefferson, and we've actually hired a demographer to come in and try to build that trajectory. Um, so uh, we wanted to take that into account and make sure that we could accommodate for that in the future. Uh, and then we also looked at cost. 
Um, you know, there are a significant amount of infrastructures, infrastructure costs that has been built into the current location. Uh, and we wanted to make sure that we added that to our matrix, knowing that any new property that we built on, uh, we would have to uh, have more infrastructure costs to build that property up as well. After looking at all of these features uh, or all of these decision criteria, we actually decided that the original location was going to be the best location to rebuild the new Henderson Middle School. The Harvey Recovery Community Advisory Group was a group of 58 community members, taxpayers, large landowners, business owners, parents, and teachers that helped administration put together a plan uh, that was then presented to the board uh, to develop a recovery package that would fit our community. They met over several meetings and developed goals uh, for this recovery package. So some recommendations for the committee. Uh, replacement buildings, they wanted to replace Henderson Middle School, the field house that includes restrooms and concession stands for the stadium, and an auditorium. Other improvements that they decided to add to this package that weren't directly impacted by Harvey was a replacement track, football, soccer, marching field surface improvements, and improved stadium, light, stadium lighting. The community, uh, committee also made other recommendations uh, for the building, such as or for buildings that we decided not to rebuild. Uh, they had a budget to work within, and in order to not exceed the budget, they had to make choices over what was a want versus what was a need. Uh, so a couple things that they decided to take out were the technology building, which included an indoor practice facility, uh, the auto mechanic shop, commodity storage, and the DAP. Now, some of these programs haven't gone away, uh, but we found other spots in the buildings to be able to support them. They also were very adamant that we had a, a very high level of building quality. Uh, everyone was really happy with the level of uh, quality that the high school was built to, uh, a 50 year standard and all block building, and they wanted to ensure that we did the same thing with Henderson Middle School. Other committee recommendations were that we build a two-story building with a really tight footprint to make sure that we could conserve all the land uh, possible for future expansion. We also wanted to build the, uh, the buildings two foot above base elevation and make sure that we address traffic flow problems on the campus. So let's look at some site plans now um, for uh, the proposed plan. We've got uh, the existing high school uh, is where, you know, where we all know where it is. Uh, across the street in the drive would be the new middle school, pretty much where the old middle school was. The new field house would then get built on the west side of the football field. And, and as noting, this is one structure. So the field house, the concession stands, and the restrooms are now all part of one building. And then the new auditorium is going to be attached to the existing uh, competition high school at the high, uh, competition gym at the high school. Uh, you will see on some renderings in a minute that the, the front entrance is still the gym entrance. So in order to save some resources, we were able to reuse the entrance to the gym and reuse the restrooms, the public restrooms uh, that the gym currently uses to make sure we're most efficient uh, with dollars as possible. This is a floor plan for Henderson Middle School. Now this, uh, you can see there's a dividing line down the middle and everything on the right side of your screen uh, are the loud areas of the campus. And so starting from the top down, you've got the cafeteria, the gymnasiums, which includes a practice gym and a uh, competition gym, and the band hall and locker rooms are all to your right. Everything to the left side is your uh, educational side of the house. And so up here on the top, you've got classrooms. In the heart of the building is your library or media center. And uh, in the front, the, down on the bottom side of your screen, you will see the administration uh, part of the building. Now there will be a second floor to this building and it'll be over the left side of the building and that will all be classroom space. Now let's take a moment to look at some of the elevations uh, or proposed elevations of the new campus. I would like to note that these are proposed elevations. Um, now these are based off of what we, we intend the building to look like, but things may change between now and when the building's actually constructed. 
Uh, this is a view of the front of the school. Uh, if you were standing directly in front of the current band hall at the high school, looking towards where the old middle school sat, this would be the, uh, the view that you would have of the new campus. This is an enlarged view of the entry where uh, this is where parent drop off will be. And so this is where the, the kids will get dropped off if you're a car rider. This is on the north side of the campus, uh, kind of where the old bus loop was. And so this is a view of where the bus drop off will be. And you can also see the, the cafeteria uh, and a small eating courtyard outside. Uh, this is going to be on the east side of the building, and so this is the gymnasium entrance. So after hours, when we're having uh, any type of games or events, this is where you would enter to, to access the gyms, which is also going to be directly uh, opposed the new field house entrance. And this is a learning courtyard. Uh, so the teachers were really excited to uh, provide their input in this committee process, and they wanted an area to where they could uh, take the kids outside and, and do some outdoor learning. And so this space was built uh, for that. You can notice that there's a, a fence to make sure that the area stays secure and we can still keep the building uh, secure and safe. Uh, but it has a nice area uh, for them to come outside and do some outdoor learning. Now I'd like to take a moment to show you a couple uh, elevations of the field house. So here we have the front of the field house. And this is actually going to be where you will enter the stadium now. Um, so you can see that the ticket sales will be here and there will be a, a breezeway here and then another one on the right side that's just fairly off screen, uh, which is going to be the path that you will take to enter the building. Uh, the center of this building is going to be for the students, the coaches, uh, the weight room, the locker rooms, uh, whereas the outside will be concession stands and restrooms. It shows up a little bit better on this picture. Uh, you can actually see the concession stands on, on both sides of the wings, the breezeways uh, is where you'll enter and exit the field. Um, and then you can actually see the weight room, uh, got some glass in the middle of it. Um, so you can actually see onto the field from the weight room. So finally, I'd like to show you an elevation of the auditorium. The auditorium uh, will be attached to the gymnasium. And so we're actually going to reutilize the gymnasium's entrance. Uh, to be able to walk through the doors and then take a left and that's how you will, the public will gain access to the auditorium. Uh, so we actually saved quite a bit of money here uh, by not creating its own entrance and giving it its own set of public restrooms by able to be, being able to really utilize this entrance. And so from the inside uh, you can see that it's going to look like a, a modern auditorium. We're shooting for around 400 seats in this and so it's going to be a nice quiet intimate setting. Uh, but think it's really going to be a superior place for our kids to perform. So let's talk a little bit about the money that we have available to rebuild these buildings. And I want to start by reminding you that the FEMA money is only money we have access to once we actually rebuild. And so we already discussed how we got to the $37.7 million of FEMA money. We have around a million and a half of insurance proceeds left. Uh, we have around $800,000 of 2016 bond funds that were uh, not able to spend because of the Harvey storm and around $404 million of other Texas uh, state grants that we've received. So we have available to us to spend $44 million. Now let's talk about the cost of these projects. The Henderson Middle School is expected to cost $45 million. The field house, concession stands, and restrooms should cost around $7.7 .7 million. Improvements to the stadium, which include the track, the field playing surface, and the lighting, is $2.7 million. The tennis court replacement will cost around $500,000. The auditorium comes in at a price tag of $6.1 million. Miscellaneous demolition, which is demolition for buildings that aren't designed to be replaced, is around $200,000. And the board felt that it was imperative to add a bond contingency to this project. Uh, contingencies are common uh, when organizations are looking to um, put a budget together for a rebuilding project because there are unknowns. Uh, they also have to worry about cost escalation or inflation. And they felt like a 10% was a, a conservative yet safe number to make sure that uh, the district could do what it promised to the community. 
Now I want to remind everybody that this is just a budget that was put together based off of the request from the um, Harvey Recovery Community Advisory Group. So the Recovery Community Advisory Group put together the package that they wanted to as far as what we wanted to replace. And then the architects put together schematic designs. They were then approved. And then once those schematic designs were approved, there was then a budget placed on those. And so this is the budget or what we expect for those costs to come in. However, once the construction documents are completed, we will then take those to the street. Uh, this will be publicly bid and uh, this will be a hard bid, which means the lowest qualified contractor will receive the award. So we've discussed how the Harvey Recovery Community Advisory Group has recommended a plan that's going to cost $69 million. And we've also told you that the school district has secured $44 million in available funding. So that's going to leave a $25 million gap. And that's what the voters are going to get to decide on in November. It's going to come to you in two propositions. Proposition A is for $21,250,000 and Proposition B is for $3,750,000. Now, there are a couple things that had to get split amongst both propositions. Uh, the main one being the field house. So the field house was designed as one building. However, because stadium upgrades have to be put into a separate proposition, the concession stands and restrooms are in proposition B, while the locker rooms, the weight room, and the coaching offices are in proposition A. So the cost for proposition A and B, uh, as shown here, are going to be around 17 cents a day for a house of a, uh, with a value of $100,000. And a house with a value of $250,000 would be right around 52 cents a day. This will add around 10 cents to the tax rate. So I'd like to show you uh, what exactly is in both Proposition A and Proposition B. So in Proposition A, we have Henderson Middle School, the auditorium, the field house, the tennis courts, miscellaneous demo, and a largest, the largest portion of the contingency. Proposition B will have stadium restrooms and stadium concession stands, which again are part of the one field house building, the track, the football, soccer, and marching field surface improvements, the stadium lighting, and a smaller portion of the contingency. Once you turn 65, you're eligible for a frozen tax ceiling. Now this applies to your homestead at property. And what this means is that your tax will not go up. Even if the rates go up or if the value of your home increases, you will stay at that same tax ceiling and pay the same amount of tax year after year. So this means that the Hard Jefferson bond will not affect the amount of taxes that you pay. In fact, the only way your taxes will go up is that if you add property to your home. And then once you add that property, that property is then added to the value of your home, a new tax ceiling is created, and then they'll be frozen at that value from that point forward. Early voting is October 13th through the 30th. And you're able to vote, uh, if you're a Jefferson County resident, you're able to vote at any of the Jefferson County polling locations. And if you're Hardin County resident, you're also able to vote at any of the Hardin County early voting locations. Now, once we're at election day, which is November 3rd, you will have to vote uh, wherever you would vote for president. So in Jefferson County, it's an open county and you can vote at any of the polling locations, but in Hardin County, you're gonna have to vote in your precinct. So in summary, Hardin Jefferson has the opportunity to build $69 million worth of projects at a community cost of $25 million.